ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind. Where previously we came to this place, the Thanatos Temple, that's what it's called. Um, in the arse end of the Molagamur Ashlandi kind of region. Um, and this place is full of undead. And we got here to the end. And we met Tragrilla here, who what seems to be this... Do you need? impossibly ancient i mean like like we're an old guy right but this guy is like impossibly ancient probably should be long dead by now but foul necromantic practices have kept him going type guy who has for some reason singled this out and decided he wants to pass on his knowledge to us before he dies i'm very very skeptical of that i think he's up to no good but we're going to play along for now because we might get something good out of it um Although the first thing we need to do is read these books. So, because they relate to important things that he has just mentioned, so we're going to have to read the buggers. I hope they don't take too long. Um, but yeah, just be, be warned, the first part of this video is pretty much just going to be um, reading. So go ahead and skip ahead if you ain't interested in that. So we'll start with the Book of Life and Service. Well, okay, that's, that's a, that is a length of a book I am comfortable with. The ranks of the blessed. Blessed are the bone men, for they serve without self and spirit forever. Blessed are the mist men, for they blend in the glory of the transcendent spirit. Blessed are the wrath men, for they render their rage unto the ages. Blessed are the masters, for they bridge the past and span the future. If you've played Dawnguard with Skyrim, this might sound familiar. Um, anyway. The litany of service, the bone man's oath, we die, we pray. To live, we serve. And the master's voice, you swore to serve your lord. Uh huh. Blasphemous revenants. Again, nice and short. Not into the world, nor out of it, but between worlds they linger, held to the hearth and tomb of by blood and loyalty. And if they come unbidden from love of kin or faith to duty, it is not unholy. It is but the answering of the ancestors, the awakening of those who never sleep, the summoning to service of those bound through hearth and house to the protection of the clan. But if sorcerers bring them forth, then such a summons is blasphemy. Basically, this, this, this is all about the temple's double standards. If they practice necromancy by bringing, summoning skeletons and things like that to guard ancestral tombs, it's completely fine. But, you know, if a necromancer or a sorcerer, in this case it says here, does it, then it's, oh, it's blasphemy, it's heresy. It must be punished by death. So... Um, an abomination before the tribes in the temple and a sin to, so great that the that ages of burning cannot cleanse the fault. Abide not the sorcerer among you, for he comes to steal the bones of your fathers and dust of your tombs. He seeks to bind by power what is yours by right, tr to drag forth the warm spirits from their world between uh, their world between and bind them to their service like slaves and beasts. Who can know the shame of the dead? ceaseless weeping of the necromancer's thrall. Cruel enough is the ancestor's service given in love to hearth and kin, but a ghost or guardian, bone walker or bone lord, summoned by profane ritual and bound by force to the corpse miner's will, how may such a spirit ever find rest? How may it ever find its way back to its blood and clan? Only a righteous Dunmer, bound by blood to hearth and kin, bound by oath and service to the temple, can call upon the spirits of the Dunmer dead. Those foreign sorcerers of other races that invade our shores, shall they be permitted to rob our tombs, to bind our kin spirits into sorcerous slavery, to steal the lives of our dead as well as our land of the living? No, I say no and no and three times more. Blah, three times more. Such necromancers must die and their profane magics must die with them. And shall we tolerate the hidden hosts of the undead, the arrogant princes of necromancers? The ancient vampire demons who creep from their lairs in the west, seeking refuge in profane Daedric shrines, abandoned Dunmer strongholds, and corrupted subterranean labyrinths of the detested Dwemer race. For ages, the great houses in the temple have kept our land clean of the vampire's taint. But now these undead lords and their vile cattle have returned. These vampires must die, and their corrupt cattle with them, and their blood taint must be forever erased by fire and stake. So, pretty self-explanatory, really. Corpse Preparation, Volume 1. A bit longer, this one. 
On the Preparation of the Corpse, Volume 1, The Acquisition of the Corpse. While the arts of necromancy are only illegal in the province of Morrowind, few citizens of the Empire have an enlightened view of our art. Thus, the acquisition of corpses on which to experiment is often difficult. In Cyrodiil, a few necromancers who have served in the who have served the Empire are given the corpses of criminals and traitors to use legally. This is something. This is, it's an interesting parallel actually to history because during the sort of Renaissance period, where um, a lot of medical scientists, essentially, I guess you'd call them, um, and anatomists, people, you know, artists actually as well, who would draw. Um, pictures of human anatomy using corpses that they dissect and stuff to get a better understanding of what the inside of the human body was like um this this happened you know they were donated um to you know places like universities where this research went on they were donated the corpses of criminals and and traitors and whatnot to actually use so in the obviously as you can see here in the in the elder scrolls universe in cyrodiil the same sort of similar sort of things happening but it's not being given to Doctors has been given to necromancers instead, so um I don't know, it's just just a thing that I remember from when I did history back in the day. And yes, it I, I like it because it has echoes of the real world in there in spite of being a bit different because magic and chip, but you know. Uh, this provides those who have acquired such a post with a fresh supply of corpses, and most of them young, strong, and intact. In Morrowind, the outlawing of necromancy would make its practice impossible were it not the fortunate institution of slavery. While the temple will investigate obvious signs of necromancy, such as hastily emptied graves or ash stolen from one of their ash pits, a careful and discreet necromancer can thrive in Morrowind by taking slaves at a modest rate. Most will assume the slave escaped or died in the ashlands. Finding suitable corpses in Black Marsh is nearly impossible due to their rapid decay. There are other, there are also diseases, Argonian tribesmen, and other difficulties that must be dealt with. I know of only a few slowed necromancers who operate successfully in Black Marsh, and even they stay near the coast. While the force, uh, forests of elsewhere pose some of the same problems as those of Black Marsh, the deserts preserve corpses for hundreds of years in a way that requires very little preparation. Khajiit of the desert tribes are often buried with only a small cairn of stones, which are easy to find and uncover. The Khajiit show remarkably enlightened indifference to graves being uncovered. It is said that in the port of Senshal, uh, one may purchase anything one desires, This, if this is true if you desire fresh corpses. While few Bosma perform Arcade's rituals when burying the dead, the the more primitive Bosma still practice cannibalism upon their enemies, which reduces the number of available corpses. As would be expected from such a backwards people, they have an intolerance of necromancy that goes beyond all reason. Many necromancers who practice our arts in Valen would become one with the trees themselves. Somerset Isle is even worse in some ways. Some Ultima born into the most respected, noble, and scholarly families are actually allowed to study the dead in the open. Their research, however, seems to be centred on finding ways to extend their lives even further rather than the more practical uses of our art. A necromancer of any other race courted Somerset Isle can expect the worst possible punishments. In Hammerfell, where worship of Arke is strongest, the dead are almost always subject to Arke's law. There are exceptions after large battles or in remote areas where death occurs far from meddlesome priests. Fortunately, the dangerous terrain and the creatures in the deserts and mountains of Hammerfell makes the acquisition of corpses possible, though they are often in poor condition and require special care and preparation. The newly formed Orsinium presents a unique opportunity. As you know, orc corpses are among the most sought after for their durability of their skin and the strength of their bones. If King Gortwog will listen to reason, we could offer the services of our art in defense of his young nation in exchange for disposing of the orcish dead. A mutually beneficial arrangement, as I'm sure the orcs will agree. To this end, a delegation has been sent to Orsinium, though we have not yet heard any word on the state of these negotiations. In my native High Rock, traditions dating back to the Witch Kings and nomadic horsemen mandate cremation of the dead. This is practiced almost without exception in the north, though... Uh, through an imperial burial in a tomb or city cemetery is more common in the south. Uh, they, there are still many corpses easily taken from the battlefields of the War of Bethany and in the lawless times that followed. There are even rumours that King Gothrid of Daggerfall may institute the imperial practice of donating the corpses of criminals to necromantic study. 
as a deterrent to the bandits and pirates that still threaten the Iliac Bay. In Skyrim, the cold weather and isolated terrain allow a few necromancers to operate freely. Alas, the availability of corpses is limited to Nords who die from exposure or in battle. While the cold is preservative, the snow makes these corpses difficult to find. More research dedicated to the magical detection of corpses would be invaluable to the necromancers of Skyrim. The Slowed are the most famous necromancers. Infamous, probably, really, would be a more accurate term, but hey. Uh, but little is known of their native Thras. In Tamriel, Slowed only practice necromancy on other races. It is uncertain whether this is true in Thras as well. If so, it would explain the number of slaves that are purchased in Tyr by Slowed merchants. The rumors of Slowed airships carrying corpses from Senchal. These difficulties lead many necromancers to create their own corpses. While I prefer to work with those who have died a natural death, it is more exp a more expedient approach is sometimes necessary to further the study of the art. While the arts of necromancy can be practiced on animals, such experiments rarely produce interesting results. The servant's ability to follow directions seems to be related to the subject's intelligence in life. While raising the corpse of a man, elf, or beast man can produce a useful servant, the corpses of animals produce mere guard dogs at best. Often a raised animal is unable to do to distinguish its master from the rest of the living and many amateur practitioners have been torn apart by the animal servants they created let such stories be a lesson to you okay so we've learned a bit about necromancy and what people think about necromancy and some ritualistic weird stuff you got to save yourself now then what do you want further knowledge You've read the books, and you are ready to learn of one of the great secrets of the necromancer. It is often difficult to find a corpse to use as an, as, as an adequate vessel. You must learn how to bind a soul to a soul gem, allowing it to return and reanimate the corpse. I have found that a soul will stay attached to a corpse until it is quite decomposed, allowing it to be bound. Simply cast a spell. I will teach you on your prospective corpse. Once you have cast the spell, quickly use this blade to remove the head. If you do this while holding a blackened soul gem, it will contain their memories, identity, and even a small piece of their soul. Be wary, though. You are bending RK's very law, and there may be consequences terrible to imagine. But go and practice, if you have the will. Bring me the corpse of a male Dunmer. Blackened soul gem has been added to your inventory. Soul splitter has been added to your inventory. You have learned the spell soul extraction, and your journal has been updated. I now know a spell that... Allows me to harvest the souls of those I killed. Tragrilla wishes me to bring him the corpse of a Dunmer. Interesting. And that's Soul Splitter. It's not very good. But... Do we... Uh... Soul Gem. They are the only form of gem suitable for containing anything greater than a beast's or dangerous soul. Uh, you may find them... You might find them in various tombs, or sometimes other necromancers may sell them. There are, of course, they are, of course, sometimes rather difficult to find. Yeah, I I know where I can find some. That, that ancestral tomb we wandered into just a little while ago. Crazy. He's muttering about something. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, I saw some of those soul gems in there. In fact, I've got one right now, a blackened soul gem. I did, I did actually have the foresight to take one of them. Um, is there a quick way out of here, or, or what? I'm guessing no. Okay. Um, I still have no idea what that's useful for. Remnant summoning. Only a well-trained summoner may use this book. Oh, okay, well, better leave it alone then. <laughs> Is there anything in? I forgot. Yeah, this has got stuff in. Salt, basically. And other things. What purpose they are to be used, I do not yet know, but I'm I'm quite sure we'll find out eventually. So gotta travel back through this delightful place. So we need to find the corpse. Of a, a dark elf, animated, and bring it to him. Now, hopefully, 
I can. I'm. What my. What I'm thinking is, I'm gonna get some more black salt gems from the. Um, from the. Right. Yeah. There's an invisible bridge here. It's kind of an Indiana Jones thing going on. There we go. Yeah. Um. <laughs> nice entrance. Um. Yeah, let's avoid the giant dragon things. So anyway, my, I'm thinking. Hopefully, maybe I can take one of the. Uh, one of the skeletons from the tombs that I found in there and reanimate one of those perhaps but I have a feeling it might not work because otherwise I'm just going to have to wait until I am accosted by um, a dark elf a male dark elf at that at some point so I can kill him, cut his head off and uh, trap his soul hello an ash storm blowing in as well. Brilliant. It's a bit of a trip actually back to that place now that I think about it. I thought it was a bit closer, but I've actually just realised we're going to go past all this crap as well. Would you like to come down and fight me? I'm, I'm open to the idea that you've got to actually come down and fight me. There we go. Right, moving on. That's not an ancestral tomb, that is Sulipund, which is full of Telvani guys. We're not really interested in that. You know what? God, you know, it'd be really helpful if I had, like, a... If I marked that place with, with so I could recall there, but... Then I'd lose my ability to teleport back... Hello? Um, teleport back to, um... My base. And also, I imagine the undead servant would not come with me either, so... Oh, this is perfect! Brilliant! Okay, where's the, um... Where's the spell you just taught me, then? Soul extraction. That's gotta be it, right? Surely? <sighs> if that's it, there's no way I can cast that. I hope it's not that. I don't remember getting... I don't remember buying this spell anywhere, though. For some reason it doesn't... It detect enchantment and resist poison, which makes no damn sense at all. I'm going to quick save here. In fact, no, I'm going to actually drop a permanent save just so the macro doesn't override it. Corpses! Right, I'm not going to use you, I'm going to use your friend over there. Right, it was very fortunate I ran into you two, actually. Right. Your soul's been trapped. Now what do I need to do? This is all a bit unclear to me, referring frankly. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you fell casting the spell. Why on earth is it restoration? Because that's a problem. Also, cost me a shitload of magic to cast it. I am. Confused, yeah, I'll we'll say that. I'm definitely confused. Hmm. I might have to um look at some documentation because quite frankly I don't really understand how this is supposed to work. Um, nevertheless, I'm going to see if I can find this, um, tomb again, or a tomb again. Oh my god, go away. Um, and loot the place. Useful bits and bobs. 
Well, I don't think this is the way back. I'm taking a bit of a wrong turning here, but never mind. Come on then, I'm gonna go, just let me. Right, let me go. This is a dead end. Yes, it is. However, if we go this way, we'll get to where we need to be. So I tell you what. We'll use our boots to just circumvent this whole uh, impassable rock face problem. Oh my god. Give it up. And bugger off. Keep an eye out for more tombs, I guess, as well. While we're at it. <coughs> Aha! This way. There's a scamp over there. There's another scamp. That's Arkenthan in all its glory over there as well. Um, right. Ah, there it is. Just uh, slide on down here. There we go. <laughs> kind of half expected to take some falling damage there or somehow, but uh, no, we're okay. <laughs> right. Welcome back to this place. Daedra. Dark Elf Skeleton. Armor ratings. It. Okay. Technically armor. Do I want it? Oh, look at that. So you throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. I can't move, but that is brilliant. It equips it like a pauldron. And so... My god, why am I carrying these? And so I'm just running along with a skeleton slug over me back. That's that's really funny. <laughs> oh dear. Um, on my skull. Maybe that is useful somehow, I don't know. Bring, wishes me to bring him the corpse of a Dunmer. I, I think this might do the job. I can't remember if he wanted me to reanimate it myself or not. The journal entry just says bring him the corpse of a Dunmer, so I shall do just that. <laughs> oh, that's just, I think that's so funny. Um, anyway, what do you want? Okay, what the... Can I really not equip a weapon? Well, I'm carrying this. I guess not. But yeah, I'm not... Oh, there you are. God, I was worried there for a second. Alright, you're coming with me. <laughs> okay, so I need to drop this thing if I want to fight. That's a little bit annoying, but I can deal with it. Let's just go up this way. to use that scroll of Windwalker actually right now, honestly, but no, not yet. Right, back this way then, basically. <laughs> the things I do in the pursuit of power. Um, just flying along. Refresh that before it runs out. With a corpse slung over me back, you know. Doing my thing. It's starting to get dark, isn't it? Let me rest on solid ground. Pfft. Okay, right. Okay, there's a bit of an animation thing going on. That's a bit weird. You little fucker, come here and fight me. I just had to drop my corpse because of you. You son of a bitch. I swear. 
Oh. Well, I'll pick this up. And he'll come after me immediately, won't he? Plant does not have enough charge. Well, that's annoying. You really ought to be doing this under the cover of darkness, shouldn't you? <laughs> Just wandering around with a corpse on your back. <laughs> Luckily out here in the Ashlands and no one no one can see me. And if they do, I shall kill them. And remove the witness. <laughs> I thought it was getting dark as in getting dark dark there, but no. Oh. So it's just the weather being weird. Yeah, it's only one PM. I thought it was later than that. Never mind. Never mind. We shall follow the trail of skeleton head. They're called skulls. Dave, they're called skulls, not skeleton heads, you idiot. You imbecile. Do you even vocabulary, bro? Alright. Should be just down here. You can see the skull entrance. There we go. I hope this is what he wants, because otherwise. Pfft. I shall have to go away and figure it out. I got my amulet on. I do, it's just that dark in here. Ugh. Oh, just another day. <coughs> another bit of necromancy in the middle of the Ashlands. With someone who I suspect might be a vampire or a lich or something. Good sir, I bring you a Dunma corpse. I hope it's what you were want you were after. Give me the corpse of a Dunma. Well, I, I mean, I've got one here. All right. If I put it there. Apparently this does not suffice. Well, I'll just leave this with you until I figure out what, it, that, what the hell it is you actually want from me. I now know a spell that allows me to harvest the souls of those I kill. I think, I think, yeah, I think the problem is he has taught me a spell that is a restoration spell, and therefore I cannot bloody cast it because I have virtually no restoration skill whatsoever. Which means I'm going to have to get trained in restoration skill. And that is going to be a long and arduous and irritating process, but it will simply have to be done. <sighs> oh dear. Well... I'm sure as shit not heading out back into the world until I've rested a bit, so I am resting right here. I want to get some Mia. But, tell you what, just rest a whole shitload of time. You look really spooky over there in the dark like that, mate. You really do. Alright, it's the morning again. We shall head back out. In fact, why didn't I just recall back to my I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I uh, should have just done that. Never mind. Um, these are recharged a bit, though. That's good. Uh, so, the question now is... Let's put these back in. Um, what do, basically? That is the question. What do? Um, I've got a load of stuff I need to sell, a load of crap I need to sell, so I tell you what, we shall head back to Vivek while I figure out our next steps. 4% chance of casting, yep. <laughs> oh dear. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the spell, and it's restoration magic, because I don't know why, it just is quite annoying. I wish it was mysticism, then I'd actually be able to do it. 
Oh well. That reminds me, we still need to find... We still need to visit an Imperial Cult Shrine so I can get an Absorb Health spell. Right. Anyway. Have I got anything I need to dump? Oh, it's a strange ladder, I suppose. That can go on top of the big pile of notes. I don't need that anymore. And what else? For my gods and emperor. Oh, yeah. I'm going to dump that in the religion pile. Uh, that would be this one, I believe. Yeah, this is kind of a continuation of the pile. Uh, there we go. Uh, anything else while we're up here? I like to think we've got a little step ladder. We're not actually just hovering. <laughs> and yes, I can levitate, but you don't want to waste levitating on stacking books. I mean, come on. Uh, let's see. Hmm. No, I think we're pretty good. I thought it's just... Memory served. I am carrying something that's reasonably heavy. That I was intending to sell. I just can't... What it is, this inventory is quite a mess. Bean Town, I suppose, the Monarch. Well, we've got this dagger now. Soul Spur, which I'm going to hang on to because I don't know if it's important or not. Um, I, I, I don't know. I might have to kill... Whoever I kill with Soul Splitter, that might be the way this works. I just really don't know. Um, I've got this Dwemer Jinx Sword, which I think I'm going to hold on to for now, even though it's, it's kind of heavy. Um, but it is useful, because it's got a really good enchantment on it, you see. Yeah, and just a load of other random bits of jewellery and crap we looted from that tomb, so... I was carrying those big heavy pauldrons and I dropped those. Maybe that was it. That must have been what I was thinking of. All right, well, I'm not going to teleport out of here for once. I'm actually going to uh, quickly nip upstairs because there's a couple of traders or I can give this stuff to. Which will save me a trip to the foreign quarter, basically. These two know better than to ask questions as well, which helps. I'm listening. Go ahead. Right. Don't, they don't have a lot of gold, but they are conveniently nearby, so, you know. This guy's blatantly wearing a wig. Look at him. <laughs> right. Let's see. Blue horn amulet. There you go. Go on, you can give me the lot for that. You know you can. Don't try and fleece me. Nice. And you... You got slightly more gold. Come on. Don't try and haggle with me. I'll out-haggle you any day of the week, mate. There we go. Right. That wasn't everything, but it's just jewellery, so it barely weighs Outlander. anything, as it is. Uh, so, the question now is, as I said, what do? Um, we are done with the Morag Tong. We are the leader of the Morag Tong. I believe there might be some more writs we can pick up if we visit a guild hall somewhere. I might just do that. Um... But for most, for the most part, I mean, that's really just if I want to grab more money. And actually, at the moment, I do want more money because I um, I want to be able to pay for restoration training, you see. So, hmm. That's okay. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Go to Morakton Guild Hall. Get, rest, get money. Acqu acquire money. <laughs> Visit an Imperial Cult Shrine, because we want to get... Well, A, we can probably get Restoration Training there, and B, we can get an Absorb Health spell there, which I really want. It will be so goddamn useful, you have no idea. Um, although we are forever hampered by the fact that we have virtually no Magicka as Fathos. It's, it's, this Magicka ball is really small. A great wizard, we are not. Um, unless we find ways to cheat which, I mean, you know, become a necromancer. <laughs> so, um... 
yeah. Hmm. And what else? Well, I guess uh, we could set our sights on House Telvani. Do we indeed still want to join House Telvani? I think we do. I think we do. Their whole philosophy on life matches ours very, very strongly. Not to mention there's a lot more House Telvani content over here in the mainland, which is very much influencing my decision, you see. Otherwise, I'd be tempted to maybe opt for one of the other houses. The prob problem is, Halalu and our Imperial lackeys, which is the last thing we want to be. Um, and Redoran are just not our style, really, at, at all. Um, the only thing we have here that ma meshes with Redoran is the fact that my long blade isn't completely worthless. Even though our short blade is totally our go-to thing with 96 skill, you know. Um, what are our high skills then? It's short blade by a country mile, followed by let's see, long blade, followed by light armor. I want to say, and then it's our magic stuff, alteration. I oh, would sneak as well, although I really do sneak. I'm amazed it's that high. Um, conjuration, speechcraft's up there. Mysticism, alchemy. So really our only magic skills are illusion, alteration, conjuration, and mysticism. And alchemy, but that's not technically. It doesn't count. Um, our athletics is 41. Our destruction is 23. Security, 30. And armor is 21. Mercantile is 21. Our uh, enchant is woefully rubbish. It's only gone up a bit because I keep using magic items all the time. Um, our restoration is 10, which is pathetic. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Aside from destruction, it seems like the one magical discipline we didn't pick is the one we desperately need right now. So, yeah, and training's really expensive now because of um, Morrowind Rebirth. Which is a real pain in the arse. Don't mind saying. I mean, my intelligence score's pretty freaking high, but yeah, because we've not got any multipliers on it because of our star sign or something like that. It's only 73 maximum magicka, even with 73 intelligence, which is pathetic. If we were like, uh, had the apprentice star sign or just even just the mage, um, our magicka would be much higher and we'd actually be able to do stuff wizard wise. The only way we can get around this, I think, really, is. <sighs> Well, I mean, if we increase our magic skills, I think spells cost less magicka the higher your skill is. So that's one thing. That that might just be Oblivion and not Morrowind, I can't remember. Um, but also... Um, well, basically, we just have to enchant a load of crap that gives us a buff to our magicka somehow. That means I need to find the fortify magicka spell effect in order to be able to apply it to an item while enchanting. And that's difficult. That is quite difficult. That might be something we can find that again at an Imperial Cult Shrine because it's restoration magic. Um, but we'll also need powerful like Grand Soul gems with Grand Souls in, along with really good items to do it with. So maybe I shouldn't be selling all these extravagant rings and shit because we're probably going to need them to enchant because they're the only kind of pieces of jewelry that are actually that contain enough magical potential for you to actually be able to, you know put a big enough enchantment in them because the quality of an item that you're enchanting does have an effect on the maximum charge and what you can do with it so um you can't for example put a constant effect enchantment on a pair of like beggar's shoes because it just it just won't work at least man it's been so long since i did any serious enchanting in this game i can barely remember but i think that's the way it works you have to get a pretty good item along with a grand soul to do a constant effect enchantment for example um, which is what we're going to want. Because I don't want to have to go into the menu and then just flick through a bunch of items pressing Q every time I want to boost my magic. I want it to be a constant thing. So... Dun, 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 dun. How else would you get around it? I don't know. You'd probably get a bit of a buff to magic if you're a vampire, I suppose. But vampirism in this game has... Oh, God, so many downsides. You don't even really want to think, seriously consider it, frankly. Um... 
Of course, there are actual there's there's actual vampire quest lines to do in this game. It's, it's, it sets this game apart very much from all of its successes, actually. In the in that um, there's actually stuff to do as a vampire. You join a clan and you actually do a quest line as if it was a guild. Um, it's quite interesting, but it does sort of break the rest of the game being a vampire. Um, unfortunately, it's the sort of thing you. You want to be a you want to if you want to do a vampire stuff you have to make a character in this game that is specifically going to be a vampire and you don't want to do anything else with because yeah anyway there's a whole lot of talking and not a lot of doing anything is there so uh, I tell you what we shall divine intervention out out of here shall hop us over to Ebenhart I hope. And then uh, we'll take a boat and then take a silt strider and get our asses to Balmora. And then at Balmora, I want to visit some shops and maybe sell some more stuff. Yeah, here we are. Although, is there anything I want to sell at this point? It's expensive. I mean, like junk like that, I guess. Maybe it's not that desperate. We go to a shop. Um, but. But what we can do is get to a Mage's Guild. And from a Mage's Guild, we can teleport ourselves to Sadrith Mora. Which we've already been to, as you can see here. But we can get to Sadrith Mora, and more specifically Wolverine Hall, where there's an Imperial Cult Shrine like, right next door. You have to go through it on your way out of a building, if I recall correctly. So... No. Any time now. And then considering we'll, we'll already be in Sadrath Mora, I think it might be a good idea to just hop over to the old Talvani Council House and sign on the dotted line. I think because you know I thought about it quite a lot, and I, I really don't. I really, I really think Lalu and and Red Ren are pretty much out of the question at this point. I think it's got to be Talvani if we're going to join a great house at all. It's got to be them, and we absolutely do want to join a great house. So, yeah, right. Beautiful sunset though. Look at that. Or is it sunrise? It's actually a sunrise, isn't it? Because it's the morning still. Good sir. Take me to Sadr. Well, that's one way to do it. I'd have to walk over to Wolverine Hall, but yeah, fine. We'll do that then instead. Fine. It'll take longer to get there, mind you, but or would it really? She's still gonna go by a silt strata and all that nonsense the other way, so. Well, hello again, Sadrith Mora. It's been a while since I came here. Why, why, why would, what was I doing here the last time I came here? I know I picked up that that quest to go find that guy in the Dunmer um, stronghold up in the Grayslands. You remember that? That's where I got the Sigic Order um, robe from because I was talking to a couple of members of the Sigic Order. That's what the quest was about, if I recall correctly. But I can't remember what, what it was that brought us to Sadrith Mora in the first place, to be honest. I think it might have been... I think it was an assassination writ thing, wasn't it? That must be what it was. Speaking of which, I think there's a Morag Tong Guild Hall around here somewhere, so we'll go visit that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, because we had... Yeah, I remember now. We had to get, go here and then head across the water out there to get to a dude... Some Ashlander dude in his yurt on the beach. I remember that now. God, that was forever ago. Right. up here, I believe. Hello, sir. I am Skellion Plebo. Go ahead. I'm sure you have questions. Spells. I want to find the best now. You know what? 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 I'm taking that. Because I think if you get fortify one attribute, it might be you. You can use it for any of them, maybe. I can't remember how it works exactly. We're gonna have to probably go head over to the Mage's Guild and do some spell making, aren't we? Just to tr just to see. Anyway, 
do you have some absorb health? Damn and blast it, you don't, do you? What good are you then? What about you? Oh, you've got spell making, that's perfect. Absorb. There we go. That's what I wanted. You know what would be amazing? Absorb magicka. <laughs> that would be pretty useful, although it'd be a bit of a You'd obviously have to absorb more magicka than you expended casting the spell, otherwise it'd be completely pointless. Regenerate. That might be just low level enough for us to be able to use, honestly. And that's really cheap, so I'll get that anyway. Not absorption, stamina. All right, we've got absorb health now, which is great. So, here's the thing. Fortify attribute. Okay, it's just these. That is a shame. Does Fortify Magical even exist as a spell type in this game? I hope it does, otherwise that puts an end to that idea. Hmm. However, we now have Absorb Health, which is not cheap to cast. Our chances of casting it aren't brilliant either, but it is pretty good. 5 to 20 points for 30 seconds on touch. In fact, we could almost go into spell making and make a toned down version of it that's easier to cast and cheaper to cast. I think we might actually do that. Um, we'll do on touch. Magnitude. How much health do we actually have like in total? As a frame of reference here, 108 health is what we actually have. So... If we wanted to make one that did just 20 health, just a straight up 20 health, for one second, no area. Spell chance is 85%, point cost is two. Two? Are you serious? Just two? Huh? Nah, surely not. That can't be right, can it? Let's call it leech health. Cost us 19 gold to try this out, so let's go for it. Can that really be can that really be correct? Is this just is this spell not gonna work somehow? Um just go out here and try this out. Let me just summon something. Um uh, Amulet of Shades? Hello. You are fucking disgusting, aren't you? Um, Alright, leech health. No, it does exactly what it needs to, and it costs me virtually no magicka. Holy shit, is this OP or what? <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, I, I'm going to go back and make a more powerful version. Holy shit. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I have a way to damage things using mysticism. I'm suddenly going to become a very powerful mage, it would seem. <laughs> That's unreal. Um, yeah, okay, touch. How about... Can I just... Can I do, can I do like, a hundred so it would basically restore all my health with one hit? That would cost me 98 gold, spell chance 73. Mind you, mind, mind, mind you, I've not got full fatigue right now. And the point cost is 14. So that's that's pretty pretty hilarious, if I'm honest with you. I could even make it a bit variable, so I could go 50 to 100. And that would reduce, re reduce it to 10 points. Spell chance 77. This seems so broken, but this is... Kind of, you know what? Sometimes that's the fun of in games like this. It's finding the combination that's broken the most and exploiting it for your own devious ends. That's, I mean, I mean, that's what 
that's what mages do, right? That's what they do. That's how they become powerful. They try and exploit magic in the most broken way possible, and that's how they become powerful mages. Like, I know it's I know it's effectively gameplay wise broken, but it makes a certain sort of weird sense when you think about it in context. Let's just let's tone it down a bit to like eighty, maybe. Point cost eleven. Spell chance. So I could cast that about seven times if I had full magicka essentially. Spell chance seventy six. Sixty to eighty. I'll just round it down to sixty. Or fifty. Now fifth I mean that's like we're talking like almost half my health anyway at fifty, aren't we? So Spell chance eighty. Spell point cost seven. I like it. Ready to leech health. Where is it? There you are. Let's do this again. Ready to leech health. Yeah. Nearly one shot at the, the Bone Walker. That is nuts. And it cost me virtually no magicka. Certainly more than the other spell. Well, how much was how, what's the rate the little one do? Yeah, it's spell cost two. Spell cost two! I mean, come on. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm a magical vampire. In the sense that I'm going to absorb all your health and kill you in the process. Like, I don't, like, uh, we've got full health right now, so you didn't get to see that bit. I could go jump off a building or something and reduce my health a bit, I suppose, but... That not only does shed loads of damage, but that restores that de that health to me in the process. That's what makes it so damn broken. Um, even if that was just a fire spell that did that damage there, that would still be amazing. But because it's a... Because it's a... Um, Absorb health spell. Oh my god. What have I done? I'm listening. Um, I have become death absorber of worlds. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> I should make a really powerful one that I can just one-shot people with. You know, for like assassination purposes is what I'm thinking. I want to just like take someone out really quickly without before anyone else can notice. Just make one. It uses up may, perhaps nearly all my magicka in the process or something, or maybe half my magicka, but just, just so much damage that they're just boom gone as soon as you hit them with it. For most average NPCs anyway, as opposed to you know someone super duper powerful. But uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. How have I never noticed this before? Is this... Is, is, I mean... Did Morrow and Rebirth like, rebalance it and accidentally break it in the process? Because I don't remember it being that OP in the original game. To be honest. But then again, I don't think I ever really used Absorb Health very much in the original game. So, I don't know. Either way... I'm a very happy bunny right now. Sort of magical vampiric bunny, of course, but... Now, around here somewhere is that's yeah more like Tom Guildhorn it's gonna be in a building significantly bigger than that one now that I think about it. Uh, unless I'm imagining things but I don't believe I am. This is the hole in the wall, isn't it? Farris hole in the wall, yeah, so that's not it. That's the slave market. I wonder if you've got any mail done with slaves. No, you don't, sadly. There's a big, big slave market in uh, in Telvanus, in Port Telvanus. Um, that's on the mainland. I just happened to know that random bit of trivia there, but um, that's a bit of a trek, so we're not going to bother with that. It's a thought, though, if I'm ever in desperate need of slaves to turn into undead followers, although, you know, it's, 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 I don't know if that's a path I want to go down. Um, even Fathers has standards. I prefer to operate on the already deceased or the idiots that try and attack me out in the wild, really. I feel like, I feel like, you know, some stupid fucking bandit tries to kill me and I resurrect his corpse to serve me. Um, I feel like that's a kind of cosmic justice in a way. 
I don't want to try to justify this to myself. But, uh, and yet I feel the need to for some reason. I, where the hell is this guild hall? My god, I know it's around here somewhere. I'm almost positive. Totally certain there's a guild, uh, there's a Moragton guild hall in this, in this town. I think that's it there. I think that's it there. I don't know though. Here we go. You just watch. I'll come. Oh, oh, after all that, there won't be any quests to do here. Oh, God, herring. Dun salibla. Oh, I don't even know. What can I do for you, Grandmaster? Can you train me with restoration? No, I didn't think so. Do I need any more lockpicks at the minute? Not really. I think we're good for now. Pokey this place. It's not much of a guild hall, is it? Nice robes. Um no, no useful training from you. Oops. Didn't mean to click that. What's that? It's the book of dawn and dusk. Okay. Hello. Spells. You got anything good? That's not terrible, actually. But still, it's destruction, so I'm not really quite as interested. You? Um. Sorry, yep, just having a senior moment there. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to give me a writ to, to do. Do any of you have the writs topic? I don't think you do. If you do, I've missed it. Well, maybe you do. Writ. I have no writs for you at this time. No. Okay, never mind then. As I suspected, it was all for naught. <laughs> Ooh, okay, right, so. Onwards to the Telvani Council House. And the next stage of my plan. <laughs> right, I, I won't do that again, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 